crafty friends welcome to today's don't regret it use it gel plate printing session so far we have used our gel plate with distress oxides but today i thought we would just take a quick look at using acrylics which is what probably most of us think we should use on gel plates before we get started though you probably want a bowl of warm soapy water next to you so that when you get acrylics on your stencils which you will do if you do this then you can pop your stencils straight in that because you really don't want acrylics to dry on your stencils because uh, it's quite hard to get off and requires a lot of scrubbing once dry so I'm going to be using crafters acrylic from deco art today and these are the only acrylics that I have and I like them because they have a matte finish and they dry very quickly so today's colours are tutti frutti soft coral sea spray and turquoise and white when using acrylics on a gel plate you don't need a lot of paint I always think it's best to start off with a small amount of paint and add more if you feel you need it. So for this first print, I'm just going to put one colour on and spread it out nice and thin. I'm not pressing particularly hard with my brayer, nice and gently now. And that way I won't make marks. If I press really hard, I'm likely to skid across the surface and leave marks. So just a kind of gentle rollering action is what's required really. And to pull a print, I just press a piece of paper down exactly the same way as we've been doing with Distress Oxides. And let it sit for a minute or two, just so the paint has a chance to grab onto the paper and dry a little bit and that way you'll get as much paint off of your gel print plate rather as possible. I don't really want this acrylic to dry on my brayer. I could roll it off and then give it a wipe but I'm just going to give it a wipe straight away and dry my brayer by rolling rollering it, I can't speak today, over a piece of paper like that. So now I've got a nice clean dry brayer. And I'm going to pull the print. You'll find when taking your paper off of the gel plate with acrylic, it's a lot stickier than if you were using Distress Oxides. But there you go, that's a nice sea foam, was it? Sea spray, a nice sea spray print. You don't have to clean your gel plate when you're changing colours. Depends on the look you want. If you don't mind a bit of colour left on the plate transferring onto your next print, that's fine. I'm going to put a few spots of this turquoise on. And I'm going to add a few little drops of white. And these will blend together as I brayer around. So we'll start up here. Just roll it gently to get nice coverage. And get a nice little mix of turquoise and white. I think I've got a little bit too much paint on my plate right now but that's okay. I'll roll my brayer here and I can use that for something else another time and then go over it and pick up some paint. And I can do that until I'm happy with the amount of paint that's on my plate and I think that will do and now I'm going to do picking up a print through a stencil and we did this with distress oxides and we can do it with acrylic so I've got my stencil on my paint and I'm going to put this one back on top trying not to slide the stencil around making sure to press through the holes in the stencil and I can roll her over it with my brayer and give that a little bit of time to transfer. You can always sneak a peek and see if you think an appropriate amount of paint has transferred to your print. I think we'll peel that off. 
So now we have that variegated pattern with the white and the turquoise on top of our sea spray. Now I can take this and pop it in a bowl of warm soapy water and there's still paint left on here, which I can pick up with another piece of paper. This is quite a slow, mindful process, I think. Try not to rush it with sort of splodging and tearing your paper off. Let it sit for a few minutes. And there we have the inverse of this, but without the sea spray. Now, if I was going to carry on with maybe a greeny, bluey green colour scheme, I wouldn't bother cleaning this because the next set of paint will dry and lift up whatever paints on there and give a bit of an interesting pattern. But I'm going to switch to some warm colours now. And I don't want that green on my warm colour prints. My gel plate is nice and dry and I'm going to use these two warm colours, soft coral and tutti frutti. I think we'll have soft coral at the top and tutti frutti at the bottom. We'll get that rolled out. Maybe a tiny little bit more soft coral and I'll roll that off there just to let my brayer clean off a bit. Pick that up and let that sit for a minute or two. So there's a lovely print there. Now I'm going to just do a white print. I didn't bother cleaning my plate because I'm still sticking with warm colours. So if there's a bit of pink or a bit of orange left on it, that's absolutely fine. And now I'm going to add this wobbly circle stencil and take this print and pull the white through the stencil. And then we have some white spots on top of my pinky orange background. And I can use this that I brayed my spare acrylic onto Stick that on there and lift what's left and pop this in the water. So now we've got a white, well it's a it's got an orangey, pinky, peachy colour because of the ink or the paint that was still on there, but we've got that lighter outline and the darker spot. So it's the inverse of that one. I think I'm just gonna go for a bit of orange that's just got white on it so that's fine I'm not bothered about that mixing or coming off on the plate because it's just white I'm not going to cover the whole plate you don't have to cover the whole plate with oxides or acrylics you can just do a little part and I'm only doing a little part because I've only got a little stencil so that is one of those sequin remnants. Obviously, they're giant sequins, but that's what that is. Um, like that, I think. And I will let that transfer. So we've got some lovely orange circles. We can take that off and print at the other end. And there we go, the inverse again. I'm not going to clean that. I'm just going to let it be and see if it adds anything to my next print. And I'm going to just do the Tutti Frutti now, the pink. And I haven't cleaned my brayer yet either. A 
I think the trouble with gel printing is that you can always pull another print. There's always uh, another idea that comes because of what's left on the plate or what's left on the brayer. There's always the opportunity to pull another print or roll another roll. And it seems to go on forever, which is how you can end up with far too many backgrounds, more than you could ever use. So again, I've got this sequin remnants here, which I've just smudged with my finger, but never mind. And I'm going to pull the print through that. Again, you can take a little sneak to see if it's pulled and it has like that. I think I might have shifted it a little bit so it's a bit extra grungy, but that's OK. We don't mind a bit of grunge and then we can pull what's left. And we've got the inverse there. So I'm going to give everything a good clean now. Take my stencils off to my sink. I'll give my brayer a good wash under the tap too. Wipe down my gel plate and come back and make a card. So here we have all the prints that we pulled this morning. I think to start with, I'm going to work with this one and this one. Today's card is going to be four by six inches and this is a smooth white card stock. And I think I want about an inch and a half of this on the front. Maybe where the colours blend a bit. I stick this down to my card I'm going to give it a little bit of a border down either side to bring in another pop of colour I'm going to use hexagon, no, not hexagon, pentagon, no, octagon dies, one, two, three, four, yeah, octagon dies to cut out these octagonal shapes from this. I've cut two of each size octagon and I want to pop them on this strip in a staggered fashion. Also, before I cut the octagons, I stuck the bit of paper, the print, to a bit of card to give it some sturdiness. Trying to keep them straight on there. And the top and the bottom ones I'm having hanging off the edge of the card so I can snip them. It looks like a continuous flow of octagons. So I'll give that a minute to dry before I do the snipping, otherwise the octagons will probably slip around. I had a bit of a sentiment stamping session last night. So I've got this happy birthday, which I stamped in black ink on white card. So I think I'll use that because that's got a nice pop to it on that bright, colourful background. For a simple focal point, I have cut this die shape out of gold foiled cardstock and that's really adding a nice bit of shine and sparkle and glamour to this card. I think these are ready to snip off now. You can do it with scissors or you could do it with a guillotine or a trimmer. I've got a sponge dauber here. This is my glue applicator dauber. I can pick up some glue and press it to the back of this intricate die cut hopefully not get any glue on the front but if we do it's not a big deal we can clean that off very easily if you do get glue on the front of your foiled die cuts take a damp baby wipe and just wipe them over and that will pick up the glue to add a bit of dimension i'll pop my sentiment up on the foam tape and i think i will center it more or less over the panel there as a finishing touch, I'm going to add a few black 
Nouveau drops, not too many, just a few to tie in the black of that sentiment with the foreground. No, the background. <laughs> oh dear, I can't think today. Right, I think that card is finished. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I like the colour combination and the grungy patterns all restrained within this part of the card, which makes this grungy gel plate card still clean and simple because there's lots of empty white space and lots of nice clean straight lines. So that was a quick visit to gel plates and acrylic paints. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas. I think in my next video, I think it'll be the last one in this gel plate series. We'll take some of the other backgrounds that I made throughout the series and make a bunch of cards probably, just to give you some ideas on things that you can do with your backgrounds and get them out of your stash and onto your cards. All right, I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.